Hi, everyone. Welcome to Future Fuel. My name is Russ Shaw, and I'm the founder of Tech London Advocates and Global Tech Advocates. And I'm delighted to welcome Jan Lozek and Inez Bergman-Nolting, founding and managing partners of Future Energy Ventures, to this end-of-year special edition of Future Fuel. So Jan and Inez, welcome. Great to have you both with us. And I want to start off by asking a question about the pandemic. Can you describe how the ongoing pandemic has affected future energy ventures? And what's been the biggest lesson or takeaway from the year? And, and Inez, let me begin with you. Mm -hmm. One silver lining of COVID is the way it has accelerated the way of digitalization and digital transformation. And given, uh, given our focus at Future Energy Ventures at asset light companies with digital focused business models, many of these companies have actually benefited during the pandemic, leading to increased adoption of their digital solutions. Excellent examples from our portfolio are companies like Hololite offering extended reality applications via streaming, BillDots, a data-driven construction management platform, or Tomondo um, offering digital uh, intelligent heating solutions. So not a digital product it's, and process as such, but a company with a largely digital and automated value chain. Or also to mention a company like EV Energy offering smart uh, charging platforms for EVs. So for us and our portfolio, it has become abundantly clear that digitalization has a huge and undebatable role to play in the energy tradition. And that's where our experience at Future Energy Ventures is. That's great. Thank you for that, Inez. Jan, what are your thoughts? I think it was an amazing year. It was so successful. We can be really proud with regard to uh, rebuilding uh, the future of energy, um, our team, um, our portfolio companies, ourselves. Um, just some facts, uh, Russ. Since we started our journey with the Future Energy Ventures Fund in 2016, investing into Series A and B startups, we have created 150 million euros of value for our investor. That's amazing, isn't it? It's great. If you think about what's our capability, what we are doing each day, that's business developing in the energy sector, isn't it? We connect startups with the energy system operators globally. And what we could achieve this year was, again, 65 million additional value for investors of our portfolio companies, for our portfolio companies. And that's a great achievement. And if you then... Um, connected to the immense, immense trend of ESG investing and, and capital coming into climate technology energy transition investment areas. Uh, we could also sharpen our profile as an ESG investor um, uh, this year, and we made many, many uh, progresses in, in investing into the most exciting companies, which help us to reduce um, CO2 emissions globally. That's great. Uh, some really great results coming through. And it obviously sounds like the both of you have been incredibly busy during during the pandemic. Um, let me move on to the to the next question. Um, what do you consider to be the biggest challenge in our journey towards becoming a more connected world? And, and Jan, let me start with you on this. Yeah, um, it, um, it's it's interesting. Um, I would say technology as such is available. And just applying this technologies, we have already at hand software and digital solutions. We could um, achieve a 15% uh, CO2 reductions globally, applying that in our energy systems in the world. However, people are not really at the pace of technology development, isn't it? So I think the challenge is it's a transformation of ourselves, uh, human beings, uh, keeping up with technological developments and just applying technologies for being quicker and faster um, in achieving or accelerating this um, CO2 reduction path we wanted to achieve. That's one point. The other point is, I think, young startups with new cool ideas are sometimes not always ready for applying them in the here and now in the current energy systems because energy needs to be safe. Uh, we wanted to have energy to have light, to fuel our cars, whatever is needed. So the topic is here, we need uh, to embrace a little bit 
um, new technologies in our energy systems. So regulators and large energy system operators needs to help and support uh, new technologies so that we can use them in future uh, um, more often or ac accelerate such technologies. So we have still some barriers in the regulatory fields of uh, the in the different countries um, um, in Europe and the US. Thank you. And then that's over to you. Yeah, and maybe in the past years, I would definitely always have added um, ca capital scarcity as one of the, the biggest barriers in the climate, climate and clean tech sector as well. But actually, this one has turned on to the plus side. Uh, capital is no longer a barrier. There's a lot of investment going into the climate and clean tech uh, space. Um, a lot of financial commitments we have also seen from around and COP26. Uh, so a great example um, in that context to name, for example, is the Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero, um, with, where they over have over 130 trillion of private finance uh, committed, committed to science based on net zero targets um, and the near milestones we have in this. Um, but also from, for our asset class, for venture capital, uh, in the clean and climate tech space, we see um, many um, generalist investors um, moving to that space, uh, for example, breakthrough, um, breakthrough ventures uh, or others. Um, but, and we believe this is a good uh, development. There's more resource available, more resource available to, to drive innovation. Um, and to develop those great companies uh, we need and we have been working with already in the past. That's great. Thank you, Inez. And this year has really brought some important events. Um, we had our own Global Tech Advocates Tech for Net Zero Investor Showcase, which you both spoke at, and, and thank you again for that. And obviously, we had the COP26 Summit, you know, which is really about enabling much needed and fruitful conversations with global leaders around the technologies that I think we all hope and believe will be driving that race towards a net zero future. So looking ahead to 2022, how do you see emerging technologies further evolving to shape the clean energy landscape? So Inez, if I can start with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Russ, actually, I look at it from, from two perspectives. So the one perspective is the one um, from a pure energy system uh, perspective and what's happening there. And the other perspective is from a purely future energy ventures and our um, investment um, strategy. Um, coming to the first one, um, I'm convinced all renewable energy solutions um, themselves will be continue to be on the phase up or scale up in 22, however you want to uh, call it. Um, however, you will also see um, further emerging technologies in the clean hydrogen economy, for example, we were seeing and we're already uh, discussing um, more on topics uh, again, like nuclear fusion or carbon capture technologies. Um, but we also see interesting developments, for example, in the uh, electric aviation space. Um, so many very interesting um, developments um, and technologies for, for us to watch. These emerging technologies are to, to be fostered, but also fun to be funded um, by research um, more. Um, and then coming to, to the second um, angle um, of technologies um, and more the future energy ventures perspective, we will continue to look and invest um, in companies that are digital oriented and that have digital solutions. Um, foremost, um, definitely AI driven solutions. We expect um, already a large part of our investments um, to have AI components um, going forward, uh, at least probably 30% uh, going forward. Um, but there are also other areas we're actively um, looking into, like um, uh, edge computing, machine learning uh, over the edge. So very interesting um, developments um, in that field uh, for us to be uh, continue looking into in, in the next year. That's great. Thank you. And Jan, your thoughts? Yeah, it's, um, what I would add is a slightly different um, aspect. It's, 
not only the technologies, but also the new business models we will see um, either in the energy system as, as well as in the transportation. And what we believe and we invest into since 2016 is that we will, um, um, platforms will emerge in both areas. If you think about what's happening in an energy system with um, the buildup of renewables and the renewable technology now is the cheapest and best solution for investing into power production. Which, which mainly means uh, energy becomes abundant and, and business models will change. And, and that will have a huge impact on the way how we uh, commercialize um, um, the energy system in future. And uh, we believe uh, we will see huge platforms running this business. The next utilities uh, will be uh, technology providers for customers. Just assume that millions of new devices will enter into the energy system and needs to be organized as in the past but with many, many more owners and users of those uh, systems. So we will see um, a huge shift um, of business models from um, operating assets and gaining a margin on, on investing and operating an asset into um, running platforms for organizing the energy systems uh, with um, um, abundant energy um, um, access and net, and net zero costs for energy which will shift um, all our, the way how we operate and organize energy hugely. And the same we see in the, in the future city field. Just think about mobility, autonomous driving, but it really means um, with regard to new uh, business opportunities. Um, and I think that's, that's a little bit different perspective on new technologies, but definitely the new technologies will shift the way um, how we use and also how we operate energy and transportation and cities in future. Thank you. That's great. And, and on to our, our last question. So may I ask each of you to share um, a final thought about future energy ventures and what, what's coming in the year ahead? So um, Jan, if I, can, if I can start off with you, please. Yeah. Um, just more generally speaking, I think there there will be huge there will be also next year a huge step um, in with regard to energy transition technology and investments. So what we see already this year, and we um, I believe this will go on more and more um, investors will also invest in those ideas of uh, building platforms in the energy system and so on and so forth, as mentioned um, and mentioned before and. Um, regulator, regulators will develop somehow and will also embrace further application of new technologies in the energy systems. We, what Ines mentioned in the very beginning, we will see much more capital in the next year than we have seen in the last five years in, in the energy transition uh, trajectory. Not only uh, renewables, also technologies, because technologies are the, are the key to open up and embrace new business models, new values. Um, and, and reduce uh, CO2 emissions. And, and, and the role of private capital will be crucial uh, for making all of this happening. But there are so many great signs uh, from COP26, uh, from, from governments, uh, from societies. So um, I assume it will be, again, a rocket um, uh, skying here. Uh, with huge success for all of us in the industry um, and will drive us closer to our vision to have a net zero carbon um, energy system in place. Thank That's great. Thank you, Jan. And Inez, what are your what are your thoughts for the year ahead? Yeah, so I can um, repeat in, in many ways uh, what Jan said. I think we at Future Energy Ventures, we are part of the solution for providing uh, the finance creating uh, the partnerships uh, in, in the market ahead and providing with our network uh, a multiplier effect for the companies um, and uh, our um, wider network. And I believe um, even with the capital, more capital coming on board, with the different players uh, coming on board, more and more companies, in some instance, maybe more uh, competition, we are well positioned. We are. We have the expertise. We have done that for for years. Um, we are really um, well positioned, and that market and will will continue with 
contributing um, to, to the energy transition and the path towards uh, decarbonization. So we will really focus on scaling our platform um, next year to take it uh, to next level. And I'm extremely excited uh, about that outlook and our contribution at uh, Future Energy Ventures to the energy transition and the race towards net uh, zero. Thank you, Inez. A very, very exciting year ahead. So looking forward to hearing more. So Jan, Inez, thank you both. Um, and to all of our viewers, thank you for joining this end of year special edition of Future Fuel. And we look forward to having more Future Energy Ventures conversations in 2022. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.